Hi again everyone, I'm Chris Tisdale and I'm a mathematician at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia. And in this presentation, I'm going to discuss the idea of a Lipschitz condition. Now, the way I'm going to um, give this presentation is within the context of ordinary differential equations and in particularly initial value problems. Now to understand this presentation, you don't really need to know that much mathematics. Anyone who's done a second course in calculus, would, who knows what a, a partial derivative is, would easily be able to understand um, uh, all of this presentation, I believe. Now Lipschitz conditions are important um, in the study of qualitative properties to all sorts of equations. Uh, Lipschitz conditions are connected with contractive maps and uh, using these contractive maps and um, uh, other related theorems, you can use Lipschitz conditions to show when solutions have a unique solution and also some idea of how to approximate the solutions uh, once you know they exist and are unique. Okay, so in the theory of ODE, Ordinary Differential Equations, this is your general first order initial value problem. Here f is some perhaps non-linear function of uh, two variables. You have some sort of initial condition. Tau and A are some um, given points. And much of the qualitative theory to this general problem relies on a Lipschitz condition. Now essentially in this uh, context a Lipschitz condition just takes the form of a fundamental inequality on F. Okay, and like I said in the abstract the, the, these Lipschitz conditions form a, co a cornerstone for gaining information about solutions to this general initial value problem such as uh, existence, uniqueness and, and the approximation of solutions. Okay so what is a Lipschitz condition? Well, this is the main idea that we're going to talk about. So suppose f is a function of two variables and um, it's de defined on at least a set D. We say that f satisfies a Lipschitz condition on a set D if we can find a constant, a non-negative constant L, such that this inequality holds for all pairs of points in the set D. Now, this particular um, inequality dates back to a mathematician uh, called Rudolf Lipschitz in 1876. He published a paper on it, and I think about 10 or 12 years earlier, he discussed the case where f is just a function of one variable. But this is going to be the, um, the form that we're going to look at. Now you can generalise the, the Lipschitz condition to where functions of three or more variables, that, that's not the subject of this particular presentation. Oh, by the way here, the x dash is just the regular derivative that you would see for functions of one variable. Okay, so the next uh, part of this presentation involves uh, gaining some understanding of when a Lipschitz condition actually holds. Well, the analysis depends on the structure of F and of course the structure of the set D that you're working in. In some cases, it's very easy to um, verify whether or not this inequality holds on your set D. So I wanted to uh, give at least a basic example um, uh, illustrating this. So let D be just the, um, the plane, and let F be this function here. So for each pair of points in the plane, consider the following difference and its, and its absolute value. Well, you just take sort of one away from the other, the T squares will cancel, and you can bring out a factor of two. So here we actually do have the Lipschitz condition, we have a quality rather than an inequality, but it still means a Lipschitz condition holds. 
So here, this F does satisfy Lipschitz condition on this set with L equals 2. Okay, that was very easy. It's not usually that easy to um, uh, verify whether or not uh, F satisfies inequality, um, uh, inequality 2. Now, the following lemma is essentially what this presentation is centred around. As mathematicians, what we'd like is to have some practical conditions under which it's easy to tell when F satisfies the ellipsis condition. Okay, and this lemma actually provides uh, some sufficient conditions that guarantee a Lipschitz condition will be satisfied. So let D be either this rectangle or this infinite strip. Now, I'll draw some pictures of those a little later. If F is defined at least on, um, on, uh, on these sets and the partial derivative of F with respect to its second variable exists is continuous on D and there's some non-negative constant, K, such that the derivative is bounded by K on the set D. Then, F does satisfy a Lipschitz condition with the Lipschitz constant equal to this number K. Now that's a useful, a very useful lemma as we'll see, um, because it's very easy to just compute a, a derivative of F and then check to see, well, does it satisfy some sort of bound on the set of interest? So let's have a look at a couple of examples and see... Oh, actually, no, before we do that, let's look at the proof. Let's look at the proof. Okay. Now, the proof is nothing more than the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so for all pairs of points in either this rectangle or this general strip, consider the following difference. Well, this difference can be written as the integral of this derivative. This integral is well defined uh, because df dy is continuous. Okay, so we're just applying the fundamental theorem of calculus here. Okay, well, let's take the absolute value of both sides. And then I can also put an absolute value inside the integral sign and switch to an inequality. And now I know from my assumption 3 that this partial derivative is bounded for all points in D. So I can keep going with my inequality and have this less than or equal to K. So now I've got K as a constant so I can actually do the integral and I'll get the following. So this now if you look, is just a Lipschitz condition with k equals l. Okay, so a pretty simple proof. Let's look at some examples and see um, how it all works. Okay, here's a function f of two variables, cosine t plus y cubed. And in this example, our set D is going to be a rectangle given by um, uh, these conditions here. The question is, does F satisfy a Lipschitz condition in this rectangle? Okay, well, before we do that, let me just give you a, a quick sketch of this little rectangle here. So let's say we're working... Um, in the TP plane. Okay, P is between minus 1 and 1, and T is between 0 and 1. Okay. All right, so let's take the partial derivative of f with respect to y and see what happens. Well, if we take the partial derivative, we'll get 3y squared. Now, 3y squared is a polynomial, so obviously it's well-defined everywhere, including this, this region, uh, this rectangle, and um, it's continuous. And in particular, if I put absolute values around the, the derivative, 
then because y is between minus 1 and 1, 3 y squared absolute must be less than or equal to 3. So what we've done is shown that all the conditions of lemma 1 hold with little a equals 0, little b equals 1, big A equals 0, big B equals 1, k equals 3. Okay, so by lemma 1, our f is Lipschitz continuous on this set here, uh, i.e. this minus this is less than or equal to 3 times the absolute of this. Okay, what about another example? In this example, I've kept the same function f, but I've changed the set d just to be this infinite strip. So um, let me just draw a little picture of this infinite strip. So essentially it would just be this region here. Okay, so the question now is, does this function satisfy Lipschitz condition on this set? Well, we can try to apply lemma 1, but actually it's not going to get us very far. And the reason is that although the partial derivative df dy is again going to be 3y squared, that's continuous and well defined on, on the, the, the infinite strip, there's no k that bounds the derivative on this infinite strip. And the reason is because this strip is unbounded. Okay, so what it means is because lemma 1 involves sufficient conditions, we can't apply, we can't apply lemma 1. So what we have to do is use other techniques to determine whether f is Lipschitz. It might, might be Lipschitz, it might not be. We, we don't know at this stage. Okay, well, if we just go back to the, you know, try to uh, prove the definition of, of the uh, inequality directly, well, this minus this is going to be this, and I can factorise here, and then with a little bit of algebra, I can get down to the following. So the question is, is this bound it by a constant? And the answer is no, again, because the set that we're working with, D, is unbounded. Okay? So, F does not satisfy Lipschitz condition on this infinite strip. So there's a couple of um, examples. Um, now, suppose, um, just for another comparison, suppose you're, you had f of t, uh, y to be, say, t plus tan inverse y. Okay, now th this function will satisfy Lipschitz condition everywhere. Okay, so uh, again, the, the, the reason is that df dy is going to be something like this, and this is bounded. Okay, so I mean, the bound doesn't have to be precise here. Um, 1 plus y squared is always greater than or equal to 1, so this must be, so um, 1 or 1 plus y squared absolute must be less than or equal to 1. So this this function, again, does satisfy a Lipschitz condition, it, it will satisfy a Lipschitz condition on any um, a strip or rectangle, actually even, even on, the whole, on the whole plane. Now, you can extend lemma 1 to uh, generalizations of these sets. 
Okay? So instead of having a rectangle or an infinite strip, you can have sets which are called convex sets. So a set is a convex set if you take two points in a set, draw a line between them, a straight line, and if that line stays in the set, then the set's convex. Okay. Now I said at the beginning I was framing the ideas around uh, ordinary differential equations. So I just wanted to show you how a Lipschitz condition is used within the uh, setting of initial value problems. And um, the general problem one that I showed at the beginning. Now the following result is a classic piece of work by uh, mathematicians Picard and Lindelof. Suppose f maps uh, this rectangle into the real numbers and let it be continuous and let tau comma a be a point in R. If f satisfies a Lipschitz condition on that rectangle then the initial value problem 1 has a unique solution on some interval containing the point tau. Okay, so this is like a, a local existence and uniqueness theorem for solutions to this problem. Well, we can um, present the following corollary in light of lemma 1. So essentially it's the same as theorem 1 except I've removed the Lipschitz condition with the conditions that dfdy exists and is continuous on the rectangle R and there's some constant that bounds uh, dfdy. Then the conclusion will be the same because these conditions imply that f has a Lipschitz, uh, satisfies a Lipschitz condition on R and therefore the picard lindelof theorem guarantees the existence of a unique solution in some neighbourhood or I guess it, uh, some local solution existing. Now in fact this is seen in many many textbooks on uh, ordinary differential equations rather than this. Okay, and perhaps now you can see why, because um, this is, number one, it's a, it's a sort of, it's a simpler thing to check. Um, and it just, it just, in my opinion, it just looks a bit nicer. Now, don't get me wrong, some functions can satisfy this, but not satisfy this. Okay, so um, I'm not trying to say that this is a better theorem, it's just slightly simpler. Now, here are some references that I mentioned throughout the presentation.